Well, they are known as Volcano Riders, a family team of three mountain bike riders setting out to Everest, the biggest mountain on Earth. This group will cycle 69 kilometres up to the summit of Hawaii's Mauna Kea Volcano. And joining us in the studio is Jeff Mallinson, his son Daniel, and his cousin Thomas Weidler, who is on course to Thank do it you. as well. So, welcome guys. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. I guess for people who haven't heard of Everesting, Jeff, give us an idea of what it means. Everesting is a cycling challenge where you essentially climb the height of Mount Everest in one ride. So that's 8,848 metres. And so, because you can't do that in one hill, you repeat the hill, you go up and down and up and down. Most people choose a lot smaller hills than the one we've chosen to do it on. It might be a couple of hundred metres high or even 500 metres high. And you just keep doing it over and over and over again, in one ride, until you've climbed the equivalent of the height of Mount Everest. So Why? how many rides will it take to go up Mount? For Mount us Kent? it will only take two because really? this is the, the biggest bike climb in the world. It's over 4,000 metres, just one go. Wow. Is that why you picked it? Yes. It is. <laughs> you didn't want to repeat the, the scenery? Uh, no, that's right. <laughs> and, and I guess you guys, what attracted you to something that sounds so gruelling? The adventure. Oh. Yeah, definitely the adventure. It's yeah. great, fun, it's what we like doing, riding. And so fitness too, I would imagine. Yeah. You've got to keep going. for yeah. How long would it take to do this, do you imagine? We're estimating at the moment around 22 hours. <sighs> and what, are you allowed to stop? We can stop, we can get off the bikes, we can eat and drink and all those sorts of things, but we can't go to the hotel and get a back rub and have a sleep. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, how much training have you guys been doing just so that you can do a 22-hour continuous sort of ride? Well, we've been training for about three months, hard training. But we've been fit beforehand, we've been racing together, Dan and I have been in a team, mountain biking, but it's been hard. Dan, how many hours would you train a day or a week? Um, in a, about a week, we'd probably train about 26 hours. And you have ridden across Australia, is that right? Yes. I so you know Australia. something about endurance on a bike? <laughs> yeah. Our longest day then was 160 k's. Wow. So, yeah. So, Jeff, how many people have done this before? And are you looking to set some sort of record here? Yeah, the boys are. Um, there's probably about over 700 who have done an Everesting around the world, and it's really starting to take off in the last year or two. There's only about 24 people we know of that have climbed this mountain, so there's probably a few more, but um, no one has yet Everested this, this climb, which is regarded as one of the hardest climbs in the world. So we're going to try and do that, but the boys will also be the youngest to do it as well. So they're both, you know, it's a little bit of extra motivation for us. If we don't make it, that's all right. We'll give it a good crack and have yeah. a, a good fun adventure at the same time. Something tells me you guys are going to make it. Now, tell us also a little bit about the conditions that you'll have to be prepared for. I mean, that's a yeah. long climb. Talk about climate, terrain. What, what factors are you having to take on board here? There are a lot of things for us to think about because we start at sea level at Hawaii, which is what you'd imagine of Hawaii. It's warm, it's beautiful, and then we keep climbing and it's going to get a lot colder. So cold that it gets to freezing and potentially snow and ice on the summit. Um, we're also above 40% of the world's atmosphere. So we've been in the altitude room lately, um, practicing and training with less oxygen, um, and that's going to be something that's really tough. Yeah, that's a big problem because when you get over 4,000 metres, you start getting altitude sickness, don't you? Yeah, yeah, significantly. So um, often at 2,800 metres, they stop everyone on the way up and they say, you've got to stay here and spend some time acclimatising. So we've got an acclimatisation plan so that when we get there, we're going to spend a few days acclimatising. And also because we're ascending slowly, we know we're trying to do all that we can, including having an emergency doctor with us who's going to be able to keep an eye on us. And of course, the other thing to think about is you are flying out on Monday. You will be doing the ride on Wednesday. How are you going to deal with possible jet lag and all those other things? We haven't yet decided the ride time because of weather and other factors that Jeff mentioned, um, but we've been changing our body clocks, so getting up early, going to bed late. Um, so that there's a little bit less jet lag and we'll have more time to get used to it over there. So How are you enjoying that, Daniel? The early starts? The, at first I didn't really enjoy getting up at 5am, <laughs> but I'm starting to get used to it now. I'm starting to go, oh, it's time to wake up, but then my alarm goes off, so yeah. <laughs> You can have a career on weekend breakfast, you never know. <laughs> Keep it up. <laughs> okay. Thomas, you've got some, some bigger ambitions after that again, haven't you? Yeah, yeah. Um, right now, um, my parents started an organisation called Elon Kids and I want to advocate for them and what they're doing over in China. Um, and also I want to do something representing Australia 
in cycling or something like that. Which right, so awesome. just give us an idea. What's Elim Kids about? Elim Kids is an organisation that looks after HIV orphans in China um, and houses them and cares for them and medicates them. Um, doing a really great job over there. That'll be good motivation for you yeah. when you're making that climb, won't it? Yeah. Very exciting. How are you feeling? Are you feeling good? Yeah. Feeling good. Feeling tired. Ready to go? <laughs> yep. No, I am a bit nervous. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure you'll be fine. You're putting a lot of training and, and you're hoping to raise some, raise some money uh, through this trip as well? Absolutely. Yeah. So on, on our Facebook page and on our website, there's links to donate to Elam Kids. So, you know, it's a small charity and everything that people can do, even if it's a small amount, really helps out and goes a long way in China, even with the bad Australian dollar. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic effort. Well, we wish you all the very best. Good luck out there. Thank Maybe you. we'll catch up with you on the way back. Yeah. Thank you. Great. <laughs> Thomas, Daniel and Jeff, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you.